This is Pat Dunn, and we're playing Skyrim. So we're rejoining a battle in progress that saw me being beaten up by the lag monster. <clears throat> Hopefully we'll be seeing a little bit better performance uh, this time by having uh, rebooted since then. Taking a pretty nasty little bit of. Oh, that cross troll isn't dead. I thought it was. Okay. That is better. Muffle in the left hand and Frost Tetranok in the right. Looking good. Let's get some troll fat from these guys. I hate to imagine the actual process of scooping troll fat out of uh, monsters like that. It's got to be pretty nasty. And is there anything? I guess we can see if we can make it up here. This doesn't seem to be a standable surface. It looks pretty slanted, so maybe, maybe not. I guess I can stand over here and slide down. Let's keep casting that to level our illusion spell. I don't think we've been in here yet. This does look like it's, it's a tower that goes pretty high up. How did... it doesn't even make sense. So we are definitely hearing a Nurn route somewhere. Maybe it's down here. Aha, there is a valve. And under here there is our Nurn root. Then there's another valve which opens this. Good. So let's step down and slide past our Atronach. And there seems to be an elevator that will take us back to Black Reach. but significantly higher up, I imagine, than where I was. Yes. Significantly higher up. <clears throat> and there are some Thelmer here. Let's give them some friends. very tempted to do a shout, but I'd be worried about knocking Jazargo off, and I don't want him to die from a nasty fall. So I'm not going to do that. Aha! There is a Nurn root. Whoa, whoa, oh, shoot. Don't die. Don't die. Oh my goodness. Oh, and I got wedged in a crevice. Okay. Apparently that was <laughs> not the brightest thing in the world to, uh, to try to get. So, lesson learned. Let's 
just keep muffling and duck back down. And down you go. And I'm pretty sure the fall uh, would have killed that guy. And I'm not going to go and chase him. Uh, chase him down. Let's stay out of the river so that I don't have another tumble. Okay. And hopefully Jazargo won't won't follow me into danger. Okay, looking good. Oh, and here are some ore samples. Let's see what's in here. Yeah, I think we're, we're nearing a point where we need to decide whether we're going to complete that quest and have the quest item, which is 20 pounds, locked into our inventory for a while, or whether we'll leave it for later. I'm kind of inclined to leave it for later at this point. And since I think we have enough Crimson Nerd Root, I think what that means is that I'm just going to head up to the surface soon. Since it's fun exploring the area, but there are not a lot of quests to, uh, to do down here. So one of the other differences between Master uh, or between high level locks and low level locks is that your lock picks they just break a lot uh, quicker. Okay, so it is far to the left, <clears throat> but not quite all the way to the left. So let's see. Okay, a little bit more than that. Let's try this much. Okay. That is good. Let's mute again. There is a piece of gold. And that is, yeah, it's, it's a goofy thing about the way this is set up. Why would... Huh, a dead end with weird sound. Okay, well. Whatever is going on there, I don't see any. Yeah, so this gold actually has, I think, Typer Septum, who is a character from the uh, Elder Scrolls Three. Um, maybe I'm misremembering. <clears throat> but yeah, the the basic problem is that this gold I don't think should have been around or at least coins of, of this type shouldn't have been around in this ruin, which is much older than, uh, than they are. I mean, I suppose other adventurers might have wandered uh, down here and left them. Seems a little far-fetched. But at the same time, I suppose they don't want to have a bajillion different types of currency. So it's a reasonable compromise. Okay. Well, compromise is the wrong word. It's a reasonable design decision not to try to be accurate with different kinds of coinage. So at this point, I think we're just going to try and find a good way out of here. And as a general hint, the dungeons that have... that look like they go up into the ceiling are the ones that probably are either great lifts or uh, they're just um, areas where you'll have to climb through a real dungeon to make it out to the surface. This looks like a great lift because it opens to Skyrim. <coughs> so 
I think that's a skeever, which is Skyrim's vers uh, versions of giant rats. Yeah, large rat-like creatures. They are not very fun. Now, I think we did get enough uh, Crimson Nurn Root to go and get the reward. I don't remember what the reward is, but... But I think there's an, N uh, an NPC who we deliver these things to. So, and the NPC is... Where? Okay, it's a little bit north of here. Maybe. Maybe? I guess we can try heading a little bit north and see if we spot something. And we will keep on casting Muffle along the way to see if we can... So, what else could it be? Are there any other above ground quest markers that that outside one could be? I don't think so. So. There's a quest marker above. Hopefully it's what we want. It might not be. I hope that Jazargo is still following me. And I'm being pulled to the right by the river, so I'll have to angle myself a little bit. But yeah, that is another thing I definitely uh, like in the game. The rivers have uh, have current. And it looks like I'm near a cave of some sort. Let's mark that on our map. Oh my goodness, there is a bear. So, we'll Frost Atronach with the left and Bound Bow with the right. That, up. Okay. And it's a snow bear. I think they're a little more dangerous than other bears. But yeah, we don't want Jizargo killed. We don't. Don't particularly. Oh. Okay, well, that wasn't too bad. Let's go back to Muffle and Conjurer Frost Atronach. And here is the cave. It looks like it is probably a cave with Nordic tombs and stuff. You know, actually, maybe th for this quest I'm supposed to read one of those books that I picked up. Altheus Notes. Siderian's Future. Okay, I didn't actually get the quest, and I don't have enough Crimson Nern Root. But I wasn't getting quest markers because I didn't ever read that and accept the quest. Okay, so there actually still is more to do down there, but I'm not going to do that now. I might return later when I actually need to be down there for the Dragon Quest stuff. But for now, I'm going to just enjoy being on the surface. This looks like it. That sounded like uh, zombies bursting out of tombs. Fortunately, the game pauses when you pick locks, which is pretty unrealistic. And it might actually be kind of cool for for one to need to 
keep aware of what's going on while picking locks, but at the same time it would be a bit of a hassle. So as TV tropes has a trope for this kind of thing, this is an acceptable break from reality. Having the game pause. Oh come on. Uh, well this is expert level, so I'm slowly approaching this little white horizontal mark here. Let's try a little bit closer to it. Yes. And let's see what's in the chest. Nothing that exciting. But... Huh. I guess skeletons, uh, they don't have uh, skin. So maybe that's why the shout would tend to go right through them. And there's some ore. Uh, always happy to have a little bit more of that. And I think there was another quest right around here uh, that I saw on the map. Yes, so there's a white file, which is just a little bit west of here in that Forsaken Cave. So let's pop in there and grab the white file. Knowing full well that sometimes just popping into a dungeon means I'm going to be in here for a while, but maybe this is a short one. Maybe not. Okay, treasure chest on a cart. I am hearing. Bears. It's oh my goodness. Yeah, that's kind of scary seeing two bears run it at, at me at once. Oh, so Bound Sword really does take a lot less mana than, uh, than Bound Bow. Bound Bow takes about half my, uh, my mana. Bound Sword takes a small fraction of it. Like as usual, once by the time the game music has the time to really get ramped up and excited, the battle is already mostly over. Okay, let's put Bound Bow in the right and uh, Conjurer Frost. Actually, Muffle in, in the right, Conjurer Frost in the left. Actually, if I remember right, maybe. Invisibility is the last um, the the last uh, last tier of illusion magic that you get. If it is, then uh, then I think I get that spell at level seventy five. Well, I mean, last normal tier. There's there's an actual different uh, absolute maximum tier for spells, but, but you have to do uh, special quests in order to unlock those for any of the schools of magic. 
Okay. Still wandering along. And, uh... And so the white file is up above in another zone. Okay, left is clear, right is also clear. I am hearing some walking uh, around, but that might be Jazargo. And somebody stepped on a trap. Oh wait, that's a monster. So it does normally take a moment for new monsters to finish registering. So you can't just summon and have immediate cannon fodder. The uh, summon has to finish, which means that normally you're better off backing off a little bit uh, while you're doing summoning. I guess I'm taking a somewhat more passive role right now. The next time I'm uh, at the College of Winterhold, I should also probably see if I can get the uh, the Storm um, Atronach. Fancy looking boots that are not a great value for my, uh, for the weight. Because, uh, ice, uh, Atronox, they're pretty good for close combat. They do, I think, have a ranged attack, but it's not that, uh, it's not that amazing. That looks like a skill book. For block. That is handy. Iron ingot is better than no ingot. How many um, how many ingots I'm I'm finding in this dungeon? This, these undead are doing a lot of crafting. Maybe these undead do all the crafting for. And that looks like potentially a monster that I'm gonna have to deal with. Oh, both of them. Oop, did not mean to summon the bell. Oh well. Good enough. One. Two. I really thought that this... It didn't make a death sound. And this is a just in case. I'm not sure about that one. Gold. Sweet. Always happy to have that. And I find it weird that some of the tougher undead uh, have shouts.
since uh, apparently lots of undead have it, and you have it, and uh, that's it. That's a weird mix. Okay, and there are still more ingots. Lots and lots of crafting stuff in this dungeon. looks like an enemy. And that looks like bad aim. It's a little better. It's Argo. I guess I don't have the right to complain given that I triggered one too just a second ago. This looks like a trap. I am guessing that's going to drop that wooden beam. So, by staying just the side of the chamber, I managed to not be hit by it. I'm not sure if Jizargo was hit. Some of the other companions you, uh, you get are a little bit uh, either clever or they have the skill that lets them that lets them avoid uh, triggering traps when they step on them. I don't think I've taken that skill yet. Okay, Forsaken Crypt. I think this is where I should be able to get the broken file. Quite remember what town yeah I don't remember what town the uh, the broken foul was uh, that quest was assigned but There was some some alchemist who was kind of sick who needed who needed it to heal himself, I think. Okay, so there is a bow. And I will summon for him a friend. It's also interesting how the architecture here really is designed to make you a little bit nervous that you're not seeing enough. And that instead of having solid walls where you really have a, a clear idea that there uh, that there's definitely not something off to the side, you have these walls that are very broken. You always have this feeling, maybe I'm just not looking quite hard enough to know if I'm safe. Like, is there a passage over to the right? Well, I guess I'll know in a second. Whereas a, a smooth wall, you'd really see it and you'd know, uh, you'd feel safe because you'd notice any deviation from the smoothness. does sound like a corpse of some kind.
creep and forward and there are Now I hate this particular trap. If you step on it, it sends you up into the ceiling where there are spikes uh, waiting to smush you. If I remember right. And I think the first time I did it, I died a very nasty death. And the white file is... Hmm. I'm not sure. Somewhere around here. Hopefully. You do move kind of slowly when you have an arrow, uh, arrow notched. Ah, oh, darn it. There goes the element of surprise, but only kind of sort of. These, these critters are definitely wimps compared to uh, what I'm able to manage. It's kind of like two taps and they are gone. Okay, I just need to get the timing right. And here's a tougher enemy. And unfortunately, it's an enemy that has a stronger form of unrelenting force, where it will knock you, uh, it'll seriously knock you over. No, don't kill my ally. seem to have gotten stuck. Well, you can shout, I can shout too. Unfortunately, I can't easily see you right now. Oh! No, Jusargo, why did you have to run like that? Darn it, that is... That's sad. I really did not... It's, this is a sad time for this, uh, for this adventure. In fact, I am going to reload here because uh, Jusargo is a fun enough adventure companion that losing him, even for a silly reason, like he decided to run right in front of an arrow, that's just stupid.
Unfortunately, this means making our way back through a lot of this stuff. But I think I might have actually missed some of this stuff because it's kind of dark in here, and last time I didn't uh, didn't light up the room very much. So I might actually manage to do a better job at looting this time than uh, than I did last time. I'm also going to move a little bit faster here because we've already seen all this content. But yeah, I also I have enough magic resistance that these guys can't really hurt me with the frost uh, spells. Now it is possible if you're really clever to manage to get your foes to trigger this trap and they will be dashed across uh, into the spikes just as much as you would be but the spikes also tend not to uh, hit them as much and unfortunately Jizargo uh, and your fr Frost Atronach also potentially can be uh, be victims of the trap, so you want to be careful. Okay. I think that right now the only I only get a two times bonus for hitting uh, my foes with uh, for doing a sneak attack with with arrows. I should say. Still, every bit helps. But I do want to uh, get that up to a three times bonus when convenient. You can do pretty well in the game without maximizing your uh, your t your bonus multipliers, though. Either from like one-handed or two-handed or whatever to uh, sneak bonuses. And here, let's step down. And. We're going to summon a new Frost Atronach to give them to start that party. Sweet. 
And that takes care of the boss here, and we get an Ebony Battle Axe, which is a pretty effective, uh... Yeah, a pretty effective, uh, weapon. Ebony weapons are second only t to, uh... Well, I guess they're third to Daedra, and, um... Third to Daedric and to um, to Dragonbone weapons. Okay, so let's head up here and get the word wall. And Ebony Bell. Nice. Leave the helmet alone. And I think the uh, file that we want is back here. What do I have? I have Candlelight and Frost Atronach. Let's swap this for Bound Bow. Let's see, are there any foes back here? I don't think there are. Okay, so this is just an al uh, alchemy workshop. Doesn't seem like actually quite the smartest place for an alchemy workshop with all these uh, Draugr around but and it is kind of goofy and breaks the feel of the game a little bit when uh, when you're doing things just because the interface isn't precise enough to let you uh, to let you do something like say grab everything out of the bowl without grabbing the bowl because in real life that's easy but within game it actually does make sense for me to grab a bowl and flip it upside down to get everything out ah uh, darn it that exactly that's exactly what I was just trying to avoid the need to um, dig through my inventory and find the bowl what was that no and uh, and take it out anyhow there's the cracked white file and we are done so we just need to make our way out of here. Like there is a uh, another exit. Oh, did I get enough? Yeah, I did get enough experience to level up. I apparently forgot to take the level up. Okay, so I got the illusion magic that lets me uh, cast spells quietly. Um, I'm, I'm not leveled enough to increase my speech skill. But if I do take this, then next time I can take merchant, which is pretty nice. Investor is when things really get fun, though. Um, but... Merchant is pretty important, so I'll take Allure for right now. And I think this is leaving me off right near the entrance to the cave. Two dead bears. What we're going to do is head to Riften. But actually, I did a little bit of research and found out what was going on with um, what was going on with Balamund. 
who's the Smith that we wanted to, um, that I tried bringing back to life after he was killed by somebody who decided to challenge me and he ended up killing several people in the town. And I resurrected him with the console, but he ended up disappearing. So apparently he went to an area in the Elder Scrolls called Limbo, which is a place that the developers put to hold NPCs that get lost somehow. And I looked up how to rescue somebody from Limbo. Hey, you mix potions, right? Can you brew me an A? That is not how it works. I've been looking for you. Got something I'm supposed to deliver. Okay. Let's what do you have? Letter. Not sure who from. He wouldn't say, just that he was a friend of yours. Looks like that's it. Got to go. Huh, a letter. Let's see what the letter says. Letter from the steward. That is not the right letter. Huh, that's weird. That's only supposed to happen when you use your shout inside of a town. But apparently the letter is saying that I got it from Blackreach, where I really don't know anybody else who makes their way down to Blackreach. Anyhow, where's Norellian? Oh, Norellian is up in Windhelm. So I'll take care of that some other time. Right now I'm going to go and rescue... Or I'm going to try to rescue uh, Balamond. So in order to do that, I will need to use the con console a little bit more. So, what is it? Player dot move to. What's what's Balamond's name? Or uh, his? Sorry, not his name. His. Okay, so there's this numeric string that represents Balamond, and I'm going to see if I can player.move to Okay, I'm pulling myself down to where Balamond is. And this is Limbo. That means something. I don't remember who Malborn is. And maybe I'll uh, see if I can rescue him too. So. So these are uh, in limbo. All of the characters with steel, eh? who end up, yeah, getting lost in the game, they end up uh, being teleported here. Unfortunately, okay. not helpful. Let's uh, head back. Teleport myself back into the real world. So I'm not actually absolutely sure that this stuff is going to work. It looks like it does. And Josargo has just been waiting for me. So let's head back out to the forge and see if I can summon Balamond here.
That didn't work. Hmm. Clearly, this is not how, uh... I I'm doing something wrong. Okay, well, I'll have to do a little bit more research to make this work, but uh, that'll be all for this uh, Let's Play. I'll see you in the next one.